This nearly perfect sphere of hot plasma is your first destination. To get there, you have to travel almost 93 million miles or one astronomical unit. That's 400 times more than the distance to the moon. The closer you get, the more confused you become. The sun's surface looks like scorched earth or caramelized popcorn. And then it just clicks. This pattern is created by the boiling gas surrounding the star. Each individual cell you see is actually the size of Texas. This gas is moving in a rolling motion at incredible speeds. This process creates so-called solar granules. Some spots look brighter. That's where scorching hot solar material has risen closer to the surface. When it cools down and sinks, you can see dark lanes. In these dark areas, there are bright specks. Those are magnetic field markers. You don't dare have a closer look because the sun's surface temperature is 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. But this number pales in comparison with how hot the star's core is – 27 million degrees. Woo, it's getting too hot. Time to move further. The closest planet to the sun is Mercury. Once you see it, you think something's gone wrong and your spacecraft has followed the wrong route. The place looks eerily similar to the good old moon. A few moments later, though, you realize it's just an illusion. Mercury is one of the four rocky planets of the solar system. That's why you can actually step on its surface. All around, you see craters created by space rocks. It would take your rover about eight days to travel all the way around the planet. But driving on Mercury wouldn't be a simple task. Its surface is littered with gigantic hills with steep slopes. Some of them reach a height of 2 miles and stretch for hundreds of miles. That's good you're wearing a special spacesuit. Mercury doesn't have an atmosphere, and the temperatures on the planet are extreme – 800 degrees during the day and minus 290 degrees at night. Now, Venus turns out to be very different from the bluish planet you saw in pictures. Before landing, you have to get through a super-dense atmosphere that's made up of carbon dioxide. While your spacecraft's descending, you watch thick clouds of sulfuric acid pass by. Soon, you realize the planet's surface is actually reddish-brown. It's a dry and hot place, with a pressure 90 times greater than that on Earth. You've landed in the middle of a flat, smooth plain. Such planes cover two-thirds of the planet's surface. But several miles away, you see a large mountain. That's a volcano, and it might be a still active one. You also spot long, winding canals. Those are old lava flows, and some of them reach 3,000 miles in length. It's longer than on any other planet. The planet's dense atmosphere creates a greenhouse effect similar to that on Earth. It traps heat, and temperatures on Venus rise up to 880 degrees. That's hot enough to melt lead. That's why it's unwise to stay on the planet for too long. Your spacecraft won't survive it. Your first impression about Mars – it's freezing cold! The temperatures here drop down to minus 80 degrees. Even from afar, the planet looks reddish. Once you make your first step on the Martian surface, you understand why. The ground's covered with rusty-colored dust. The same fine dust is floating around you. Wherever you look, you see golden, brown, tan, and even greenish hues. They depend on the minerals that make up the soil. The size of the dust layer varies from area to area, but in most places, it's 7 feet thick. The planet's surface is rocky. It's covered with dry lake beds, craters, volcanoes, and canyons. The tallest planetary mountain in the solar system, Olympus Mons, is on Mars. It's 2.5 times higher than Mount Everest and about the size of Arizona across. Martian atmosphere is much thinner than Earth's and contains 95% carbon dioxide and a mere 1% of oxygen. Dust storms sometimes cover the entire planet, and the largest ones can even be seen from Earth. You're approaching the largest planet in the solar system. More than 89,000 miles wide at the equator, Jupiter is so large it could fit 1,300 Earths inside of it. It's also terrifyingly hot about 43,000 degrees at the core. Unfortunately, you can't really land on the planet. Jupiter is a gas giant with an atmosphere made up of hydrogen and helium gas. During your descent, you admire thick brown, yellow, red, and white clouds. They make the planet look colorful and beautifully striped. If you kept going deeper toward the center of the planet, you'd see hydrogen turn liquid. 
But such a dive isn't on your agenda. You've come to see the Great Red Spot. That's an enormous spinning storm the size of our home planet. It's been raging for the last 360 years. The hurricane's color varies from pale salmon and white to dark brick red. Like Jupiter, Saturn doesn't have any solid surface. This planet's made up of mostly hydrogen and helium, and its temperature and density change the deeper you go. If you decided to leave your spacecraft and step on Saturn's surface, you just fall into the planet. From above, though, it looks as if the gas giant does have a surface. The seemingly solid, yellowish-brown sphere is surrounded by layers of clouds. The outer visible layer is ammonia clouds. Under them, there are hydrosulfide clouds. And the innermost layer is made up of clouds of water. While admiring the planet from above, you notice its most famous feature – awesome gray, beige, and tan rings. These groups of tiny ringlets are made of chunks of rock and ice. You also spot several of the 53 moons of Saturn. Titan, an icy world bigger than our moon and even Mercury, is the largest of them. Saturn, check. The next planet on your way is a blue-green ball of ice and gas. Ice giant Uranus has this beautiful hue thanks to the light from the sun which gets reflected off the planet's surface. The planet isn't solid. If your spacecraft didn't manage to stop in time, it would fly through the upper atmosphere and sink into the liquid icy center. Uranus is orbiting the sun on its side. It's the only planet with its axis pointing almost directly at our star. It might be because of a collision with a large space body soon after formation. You're lucky it's summer on the planet. That's why you can observe an extreme storm. Such hurricanes occur only when Uranus is heated to its most. The hurricane spreads over more than 6,000 miles, which is almost the distance between Japan and the US. You also manage to gape at the planet's two sets of rings. The inner ring system consists of narrow dark circles, while the two outer rings are bright, one blue and one red. The furthest planet from the Sun, Neptune, is four times the size of Earth, but 17 times as heavy. The blue surface you see when coming closer is actually a layer of swirling gas and permanent clouds. The planet's mantle, made up of water, ammonia, and methane ices, is the closest thing Neptune has to a surface. And still, there isn't solid ground for you to walk on. Let's say you made a decision to get down to the very core of the planet. Then you'd feel great temperature changes from minus 340 degrees at the surface to more than 12,000 degrees at the core. Such mind-boggling temperature differences create powerful windstorms. Their speed reaches 1,200 miles per hour. Okay, here's your arm and leg back. It's time to go home.